Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome, Welcome. to Church at Home. Oh, massive. Oh, 1st of December. Yes. It's time. <laughs> Oh, I think there's we go. To the yeah, a little bit of depression. <laughs> but it's Christmas. Yeah, Christmas time. This is the month. Mm -hmm. This is the month. Are you, have you got your Christmas tree up yet? My tree is actually always up, but I need to decorate it. Wait, always up? This is why it's alive. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, we bought, Brody and I bought one from Bunnings like ages ago, a couple years ago, and it's been slowly but surely growing. That's a good upgraded idea. Upgraded to a bigger pot. And yeah, it's like as tall as me now. That's solid. Oh, that's a great, great idea. Yeah. I've, I've just got a fake tree, but. I've still got to put it up. My Christmas decoration. Any new ones for this year? I'm thinking of going to get some red ones. A bit more traditional. Mm, I've, got, traditional. I've got a couple like gold and whatever, but we need a refresh. I like it. What if you yeah. put a, a Christmas pudding on top? The tree's you not know, like the ball, like enough. uncooked ball. <laughs> you just tie it to the top of the tree. And then on Christmas day, you get to eat it. All right, you do that for your tree. Yeah, right. I won't do it for mine. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, well, I hope that you guys at home have put your trees up. If not, yeah. today's the day. You know, get onto it. We're all cracking into our first, um, what is those, the advent yeah, calendar, advent the first day. Have yeah. your chalky for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. We've got plenty of things happening around mm. this place over this next Christmas period. Yeah. Starting off with the 8th of December, our Christmas bake off. Yes. It's the young adults versus the prime timers. So, uh, look, you know, young bloods or the people who have been baking for years. You be the judge. I mean, literally, you be the judge. If you yeah. come to the church on the 8th of December, in between services, so come early if you'd normally go to the mm -hmm. second service, you get to try all the food and vote on who you think is the favorite. And the winner gets a special spoon. It's the whole thing. But. Yeah, I'm hoping that the prime timers really go hard with their best desserts or baked treats. I'm looking forward to eating everything. I just want to have a little snack of ruse. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. And then on the 15th of December, which is the week after, yep. we are having our family picnic at George Pentland Gardens. Um, entry via the Foot Street entrance okay. near the playground. Just well, that's going to be in writing somewhere. I'll Google you know, that later. Bring your own picnic. Yeah, bring, your <laughs> bring your own picnic. Um, there maybe is going to cool. be an appearance from Santa. Ooh, we'll see if we're I lucky, like if we've been good boys and girls. Santa can um, bring his picnic. Yeah, well, I hope he does. It's going to be just candy canes and Christmas puddings. <laughs> I like it. But that's going to be really, really fun. Yeah, perfect. And then 21st and 22nd of December, we've got the Calling All Angels mm. Christmas show. <sighs> Can't, Can't go wrong with a Christmas show, yeah, but no. you do have to get tickets for that yep. one. Uh, the funds are going to go to the kids in Papua New Guinea, so yep. it goes to a good cause. But it's going to be an amazing show. Yeah, Can't wait there's already. three opportunities to see that, obviously. The Saturday night and then the Sunday morning 10am yep. show and then Sunday 3 o'clock. So the Sunday show is replacing our church in-person services. So yep. don't rock up to church thinking rock you're going to get it. Calling all angels yeah. instead. Book a ticket, rock up to Calling All Angels. It's gonna be really good. And then on the 24th, so just a few days later, we have our candlelit carol service, which is stunning. Every yeah. year, so good. It's like our favorite oh. time of year. Um, Vocal show off. We'll, oh. we'll supply the candles. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, don't have to worry about being YO. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for all of the details, head to the app. Um, yeah, for all of those yeah, things. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Head to the app and pop all the dates into your diary so you don't forget because yeah. that'd be sad. Absolutely. Yeah. And another date for your diary, biggest thing of the year next to Christmas, mm -hmm. Camp No Fear. Woo -woo -woo -woo! Check this video out.
That was awesome. I'm so excited for camp. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you'd like to be generous this morning, uh, just follow those details because things like camp mm. uh, don't just happen. Like yeah. they come with uh, a requirement for generosity mm. and, it, and it is the season for giving. So why not uh, be generous this morning uh, to Gateway and that will, might help go towards things like camp sponsorships, yeah. might help go towards things like the kids in PNG, uh, family hampers for people doing it tough this Christmas, all yeah. sorts of things. Um, but it's the season for, for generosity, season yeah. for joy. So uh, don't forget that this morning. Yeah, awesome. And today we have a really special treat. We have our good friend, Pastor Bin Nguyen, coming all the way from Sun Life Church in Oof. WA. It's gonna be really good. Love it, so excited for Bin. Well, good morning, Gateway Church. Um, it's always good to be with you. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bin, and I like to see myself as uh, one of the leaders and pastors at Gateway Church. Because deep down, I am praying that you uh, offer me a role as your Vietnamese community pastor, and I get to be part of your team. You know what? Uh, it is always a joy to be with you. It is. I love this church. I really love your pastors a lot. I love the team. I love it every time I get to be with you. And I just want to say thank you so much for making me feel so part of the family. Hey friends, I've got a message for you, a message on hope. I, I titled the message, you know, hope is here. And let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in a season where you have lost hope? Like it seems like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe that is you today. You feel like the ability to keep moving forward is just too much. There's no longer confidence and courage and passion or energy to see a brighter future. Or maybe, you know, you're just waiting for that breakthrough and it's been too long and you are waiting and waiting. And you know what? The light of hope is slowly flickering away. Do you remember back in October 2021 in Western Australia, there was a young four-year-old girl by the name of Chloe Smith. I've got her photo on the screen here. Remember, she was abducted whilst camping with her family in outback West Australia. The, the entire country, we held our breath waiting to hear news of the whereabouts of little Chloe. And I'm sure, like her parents, each day that went by with no information of her whereabouts, hope was slowly being sucked away. Friends, maybe that is you today. You know, you're in the middle of a season where you are waiting for God to turn your situation around. You are praying that God would answer your prayer and nothing has happened yet. And you feel defeated. You feel that your soul is crushed. You have lost hope. You know, I agree with the writer, William Sturron. He writes this, It is hopelessness even more than pain that crushes the soul. If that is you today, listen carefully. I've got some good news for you. Friends, there is a God who brings hope to those who need it. You know, in today's reading from Luke chapter 1, we find Zechariah's song of hope. And the reason why Zechariah wrote this billboard chart-topping number one smash hit song was because he and his wife, Elizabeth, they longed to be parent. And finally, with God, Elizabeth falls pregnant and she gives birth to their son, John the Baptist. Now, go with me to Luke 
uh, chapter 1, verse 13. This is before the birth of John the Baptist. But the angel said to him, that's the angel speaking to Zechariah, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you are to call him John. And then several months later, Holy Spirit of God would then speak to Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, a relative of Elizabeth. And look what the Spirit of God says in Luke chapter 1, verse 36 and 37. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age, so Elizabeth is old now, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Can you see that? You know, it seems to be impossible, but with God, it is possible. The wait is over. You know, uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they're blessed now with a son. And so now we see this song of Zechariah. It's a song of hope. And in this song, which is 13 verses, only two verses have been dedicated to John the Baptist and the rest of the song directed towards the goodness of God. And so with the time I have, I want to draw out just two points from Zechariah's song that will give you and me hope in the midst of hopelessness. Are you ready? Here's the very first point. God remembers us. You know, some months ago, I was preaching at a friend's church. And after the service, a man came to me and he said to me, Hey, Bin, do you remember me? I was very embarrassed because I didn't remember this guy. However, he remembered me and he told me we went to high school together some 30 years ago. Now, the fact that this guy remembered me, he he made me feel so appreciated and worthy. You see, friends, we live in a culture where apparently, apparently we're so connected with the introduction of social media, but in reality, In the Western world, loneliness is at its highest. We find ourselves in our own little world and the smartphone screen with its, you know, updates and news feed has become our community. But when someone, an actual human being, not AI or some bot, a person actually remembers us and they tell us that they're thinking of us or they're praying for us, We, as humans, we feel loved, we feel known, we feel appreciated, we feel cared for. Now imagine the creator of the universe, the God of all gods, the one who knows the end from the beginning. God is thinking of you and me. And that's what we find in Zechariah's song. A God who remembers his people and a God who also remembers Zechariah and Elizabeth. Now go with me back to the text in Luke chapter 1, verse 68 onwards. Let me read the word of God. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. Did you notice those phrases in his song? God has come. As he said through his prophets of long ago, to remember his holy covenant. Here's the context. You see, God has been silent for some 400 years. Because the last time God spoke to his people was through the Old Testament prophet Malachi. So from the book of Malachi to the gospel, that was a period where there were no prophets of God, no presence of God, no provision of God, nothing but silence. Now, I could imagine God's people thinking, have we really messed up that Yahweh, our God, has forgotten us? But friends, that's not the God of the Bible. See, the Bible teaches us that God never forgets us. In fact, I would say God cannot forget you and me. You know, this is what the prophet Isaiah, he writes in Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? 
Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. The I here is God. God says, I will not forget you. A mother may forget her nursing child, but I, God, will not forget you. That means that God remembers you and me, my friends. In fact, you know Zechariah in Hebrews means, are you ready? It means God remembers. Our God is the same God who remembered Noah and his family. The God who remember Abraham and Sarah. The God who remember Joseph when he was sold into slavery. The God who remember Moses when he was in the wilderness. The God who remember his people crying out when they were being oppressed in Egypt. The God who remember Zechariah and Elizabeth right here in this morning's text. And all those examples I just mentioned. When God remembers, guess what? God acts. God saved his people from Egypt. He acted there. God blessed Abram and Sarah with a son, Isaac. He acted there. God used Joseph to save his people from a famine. He acted there. God used Moses to save his people from the hands of Pharaoh. He acted there. You know, Kent Hughes, I quote him, he says this, God's remembering is more than a recollection because when God remembers, he acts. You see, friends, We can have hope because our God remembers us. He loves us. He cares for us. And we can trust that when He remembers us, He will act. And when He acts, listen carefully, it's always according to His good and perfect timing. He will act according to His timing. He hasn't forgotten you, my friend. He remembers you. You know, the late Timothy Keller once gave an illustration of two prisoners locked away for some 10 years. The first man was told by his wife that she wanted out. She wanted to leave him. She could not wait that long. In fact, she's found another lover. She's found another man and she wants to move on. This first prisoner, when he heard this, he lost hope. And not soon later, he died a lonely man in his prison cell. Now, however, the second prisoner was told by his wife she's pregnant with their child. She promises to raise the child and she looks forward to their reunion. She promised him that she loves him and she'll wait for him and she'll never forget him. You know, the second prisoner lived every day whilst he was in prison in the hope that his wife is waiting for him. He had hope. He knew that his wife is remembering him and he hoped to have that day to be reunited with his family. Friends, listen carefully. God remembers us. And we can live every day with a hope, knowing that one day we will be reunited with our God in eternity future. We have a hope. A hope not from this world, but from a God out of this world. A God who loves us. And we know that God is loving us and caring for us and thinking of us. And He will act according to His perfect timing. Friends, that gives us hope. Amen. Hope to keep trusting God. Hope to keep moving forward. Uh, This is what the psalmist says in Psalms 136.23. It is He who remembered us in our lowest state, for His steadfast love endures forever. Friends, don't forget, God remembers you. And that gives you hope. Now, my second point is this. God redeems us. Look back at Zechariah's song. Look in verse 68 again. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. Did you notice the word redeem? It's in the past tense. Uh, This means that Zechariah was so confident that God would redeem his people with the coming Messiah. You know what? The coming of Jesus, that first Christmas, was God's ultimate plan to redeem us back to Him. That is the essence of Christmas. That is Christmas in a nutshell, that God came to bring us back to Him. But as we continue to look into Zechariah's song, the theme of redemption, it's very obvious, my friend. Uh, Look in verse uh, 73 onwards. Uh, The oath he swore to our father Abraham, 
to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Verse 77 and 78, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God. Verse 79, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. You know, redemption is a slave trade terminology. It's when uh, something or someone is released or recovered by the payment of a price. So as we read the Bible, uh, uh, redemption is associated with words like ransom or substitution or deliverance, uh, or salvation. And so God would come into our broken world to redeem broken people back to his family. That's what redemption means. And I love it how the Apostle Paul, he puts it like this in Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. You see what Paul is saying? We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. Yet, God would come to redeem us. He came not to make bad people good, but what? To make dead people alive, to be part of his family. We are redeemed into his family. That's why on the cross, that first Easter, that's what God did. He died in our place to redeem us. That's redemption. But there's more. You know there's more. There's more than what took place on the cross. Do you know that God is also redeeming you and me today? He's redeeming us today. That means that whatever situation we may be facing today, whatever we are going through today, God can still redeem that situation for our good and for His glory. Paul puts it this way in Romans 8.28, And we know that in all things, not some things, all things, God works for the good of those who He loved, who have been called according to His purpose. You notice that all things, the good, the bad, and even the ugly, God is still doing a beautiful work. You know, um, I remember as a four-year-old boy living in the refugee camp of Indonesia. Here's a photo of me and my father and uncle. Now this took place back in 1980. For those who do not know my story, I was once a refugee. We escaped Vietnam in 1980. Well, I have these beautiful memories of my uncle, which is my dad's younger brother, collecting bits and pieces of rubbish. You know, my uncle would go collect lids from plastic bottles and toothpaste boxes and matchstick boxes and little sticks and, and all these broken bits and pieces. And what he would do is he would spend hours creating little toy cars and toy trucks for me to play with. And I would sit there patiently watching him and waiting for him to do his work. You know, friends, life is a bit like that. And as we wait for God to do a redeeming work, we know that he is up to something good. There may be seasons where we feel like nothing is going right. Maybe that is you today. We feel like our lives are so broken and it's broken to bits and pieces and not sure what God would do with our mess. But if we know that God is always at work for our good, if we know that God is still redeeming all situation for His glory, and we know that God is always doing something good no matter how messed up the situation may be, no matter how broken we may be, if we know that God loves us and God cares for us and God is redeeming us, God can still create beautiful things in the midst of our brokenness. And I believe that. I believe that everything we experience in this life, especially the tough season, God can still create something beautiful and new in those tough seasons. And friends, if we know that's the case, wow, we can have hope. We can keep trusting God. Now let me leave you with an old hymn from Avis Christensen, written in 1918. The hymn is titled, Out of the Depths to the Glory Above. It goes like this, Out of the depths to the glory above, I have been lifted in wonderful love. From every fetter my spirit is free, for Jesus has lifted me. 
Jesus has lifted me. Jesus has lifted me out of the night into glorious light. Yes, Jesus has lifted me. So friends, hope is here. Hope is here today. May this Christmas you find the hope that God has for you. And don't forget, we can have hope because one, God remembers us and two, God redeems us. Let me pray for you, especially those who really need hope in this time. Let me pray. And Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that in your word, you give us hope. And I'm grateful that you remember us, that you never forget us. You remember those moments when we are struggling, those moments when we feel that you are not there, but yet you are there and you remember us and you love us and you care for us. And God, thank you so much you're redeeming us. That old situation, you can still redeem it for our good and your glory. So God, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters, anyone who's needing hope, Lord, that your hope will rest upon their heart, that you will settle their hearts, anxiety to leave, fear to leave, hope and peace and love to fuel their hearts right now. God, thank you so much that this Christmas we're reminded that hope is here. Will you bless us? Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Gateway Church. God bless you. Bye-bye. generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cry
never forget I just can't believe you'd love me like that, love me like that You never let go Thought I was alone, now I know you were close I can see it now, you were bringing me home I just can't believe you'd love me like that, love me like that Oh, every day gets better when I'm walking with you Let's